Let's use the TI Inspire to calculate some summary statistics for our data. I have a spreadsheet that I've created here and I've got seconds and then I went in and I did seconds plus three to increase this and we used this in the last video to make a dot plot which we then changed into a histogram. But let's say you want some more information, you want to know mean, median, mode, all those good little uh, statistics that you can calculate. There are two places you can do this. You can do this right in the spreadsheet page where you are and if you will go over to an empty field and again, if you're ever confused about where to go in the TI Inspire, start with the menu button. That's about the best place you can go to find everything you need. So I'm going to press menu. And what I want is number four, statistics, stat calculations. And then what I want is one variable statistics because I have one variable that I've collected here that I want to analyze. It's going to say the number of lists. Just go ahead and click one through that. I'm going to go through that one more time. So I'm going to cancel out of these. So I go menu statistics, stat calculations, oh, and I accidentally clicked the wrong one, <laughs> menu, statistics, stat calculations, and then number one, one variable statistics. I'm going to choose one list, and I'm going to drop down my X variable, and I'm going to use seconds, which was my original data set here, so seconds. There's my X list. It says frequency list. Um, in this case, we don't have a frequency list, but you could have created a frequency list where you said um, there were, here's the number 27, and then your second column, you could have frequency three. I've got three 27s, but my data is just all mixed up in one big pile, so everything's one. We do not have a category list. You could use that if you had one list of data, but you'd identified um, these are males and these are females or this is test one and this is test two or something um, and then it says first result column that's where it's going to plant your data for you to see and most of the time this defaults to the first empty column you have available so if um, you should usually just trust that unless you want it specifically to be somewhere else I'm going to click OK, and now I have my one variable data. So um, one thing that happens sometimes if you do this, if you've entered in this really big, long string of values, you'll run the one variable statistics and you'll think, oh no, they didn't show up. Um, so sometimes you have to go all the way back up the top to see them again. So I'm going to go over here. Here's my one variable statistics, and here's what I see. Here is X bar. That is the mean. And the calculator doesn't differentiate whether or not you put in um, a population or a sample. Um, it's going to use X bar. So you, as a statistician, you might need to know that that's a mu if you know that you entered a population. So the computation's the same, so it doesn't um, feed that back. We've got the sum of our X's. Um, the sum of our x squared values. Those can both be very useful in some of our statistical formulas that we use. So if you are trying to find standard deviation by hand, or you're trying to find the mean by hand, or using some of our, our formulas for linear regression, and you need to have the sum of x or the sum of x squared for that computational formula, you can grab those values out of there. Um, then you have two fields. It says S x and sigma x and you'll notice those numbers are different with the sx being just a very little bit larger that's your standard deviation now again the calculator doesn't know if you entered a sample or if you entered a population so every time you enter your data and you run this calculation you need to understand that one of these two numbers is invalid so I, as the statistician, have to know if I entered a sample, in which case the standard deviation of that sample is 7.045, or if I, the statistician, entered the population data, in which case the standard deviation is 7.006. Okay, so if you entered a sample, this is not saying that the, oh, that means the population would have had, no, 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 it's the calculator doesn't know which one you particularly entered, and so it's giving you both numbers, and you, the statistician, have to decide which one is valid. All right, my next option here, oh, I switched pages. Okay, my next option down on this list, okay, I have... A static -y mouse. I've got n, that's our sample size, so I can tell there were 89 numbers in my data set. And then I'm going to get the five number summary, which is incredibly useful for calculating um, our box plot by hand. So I get the minimum, 
the quartile 1 value, the median, the quartile 3 value, and the maximum value in the data set. I also get this value, it says SSX, and if you hover over that, you can see that's the sum of X minus X bar, quantity squared, which is very useful in calculating standard deviation by hand, and also several other statistical formulas. Okay, so there's that value. Now, all of those one variable statistics, very useful to us, they do show up in some other places as well. I'm going to go back to that picture really quick from the data before. If I had a box plot, for example, okay, I would be able to hover over that and get my minimum, my quartile 1, my median, my quartile 3, and my um, maximum value here. That on, I don't see any dots on either end, so I don't believe there are any outliers in this data set. Another place you can run this, you can add a new page, so press Control doc and you can add a calculator page. And in this calculator page, you can also run those one variable statistics. The rows commands are still the same, I'm going statistics, stat calculations and one variable statistics, the commands are still the same. I'm going to pick seconds here, no category list, no frequency list, I click OK, and I get this same report printed out over here as well. Okay. Another thing you do if you just wanted one specific value, for example the mean, if you know what that command is, for example in the TI Inspire it's just mean, you can use the alphabet keys to type that in, and parentheses, and then click your variable key Okay, and you want to choose your variable in there, which is seconds, and it would give you that mean. Notice this did give me this as a decimal, sorry, as a fraction. So don't forget that anytime you want to get a decimal, one of the easiest ways to do that is to press Control and Enter, and it'll approximate that value for you. Thank you.